So we've asked Mary to help to put everything we've heard today into some kind of perspective, maybe tie it all together before we break for the evening. So I'd like to ask you all to just indulge us and please stay for for another uh, 20, 30 minutes, and uh, then we'll, we'll get you out in plenty of time for dinner. So Mary, come on up. Thank you. Thanks, Jennifer. Well, wow, thank you all for, for staying. And um, I always seem to be given these really small, uh, easy tasks, like uh, how do we unleash uh, American prosperity? Can we get through that in, in, in an hour? So um, I just wanted, again, to, to thank Jennifer um, and the rest of the Steamboat team. This has been a really wonderful kickoff. And if you missed it, I would suggest that you all go out and buy Matthew Spaulding's book, because he gave um, one of the most succinct and effective and engaging uh, classes, uh, seminars, in an hour and a half um, on our core principles on the American founding that, that I have really uh, ever heard. Um, so he will be here tomorrow uh, giving short remarks, I think, uh, after, the, after the lunch session. Uh, please don't miss that. Um, clearly the themes today, and by the way, I have to speak ex extemporaneously because every other speaker has managed to do this. So now I feel a lot of pressure that I can't bring <laughs> notes up here. And I have to sum it all up in my head. So let's, let's try to do this. But clearly the theme of today is a theme of, of change and disruption. Uh, that there is great concern in the country, there's great frustration in the country, that we have a potential to do so much more than we're doing, whether it's on the economy, whether it's in our communities, what Senator Sass spoke of, and whether really on the economic point, I thought that was a very interesting panel because you saw a consensus across the board that there were things that could be done tomorrow uh, if only we had the power to do it. Um, one of the, I think, least understood parts of the Obama era is just how much bipartisan consensus there really was in Congress to do things like tax reform, to do things like entitlement reform. But what the media didn't report is that Harry Reid wouldn't let any of these bills onto the floor. And every time uh, the leaders of Congress would go to the White House and say, look, we have a bipartisan deal, the president would say, well, I want a trillion dollar tax increase. So there is a possibility of bipartisan consensus there with someone else in the White House. And I think you heard that optimism uh, in this last panel. I did want to make uh, just very, very brief remarks, and I promise I won't keep you for too long, on another area where we are seeing an enormous amount of disruption and change and disorder, and that's in the foreign policy realm. Um, I don't know how many of you know this, but we do a foreign policy podcast at the Wall Street Journal called Foreign Edition. I do it in conjunction with my wonderful colleague, Brett Stevens, who's our foreign affairs columnist and our deputy editor. And we have been talking about the theme of global disorder now for a very long time. We talk about it every week on the show. And I believe two things. I believe we are at a similar point in terms of that tipping point of disruption that we are with the economy. Uh, and secondly, I think that we don't have very good choices when it comes to these two candidates. So why do I say that? We actually did have bipartisan consensus after World War II about America's role in the world. There was a clear enemy, which was communism. There was a clear good guy and a bad guy. And Americans and our allies around the world saw the benefits in America enforcing peace and security all over the world. But most importantly, peace and security for trade. You would never have the new Asian tigers. You'd never have China rising. You wouldn't have the kind of prosperity that Japan enjoys. And I'm talking too much about Asia, but that's, that's the most recent place where we've seen this happen, without American power in the world. And I believe that the Obama presidency has called that into question. It's no longer such a sure thing that that's the role that we want America to play in the world. And this is a very, very significant change. And it's not a change that we're talking a lot about because we have so many problems here at home. Most of the panelists today talked about domestic issues. They talked about state issues. They talked about local issues and community. But they didn't talk about what's happening beyond our borders that's starting to come here. Well, the, 
problems abroad are coming here because America has retreated from the world. And that was really an explicit policy of this administration. It was probably due to an overreach under W. But Obama, remember, in large part was elected as the anti-Bush. We saw what interventionism and the costs of going abroad and uh, promoting democracy were. But now we're starting to see uh, the opposite problem of what American retreat does. We've seen a rise of China, but we've also embraced Iran. Uh, Iran has been working against us for 40 years. It's killed Americans in the Middle East, killed Argentinians, killed Jews, killing people in Yemen, killing people in Iraq, killed a lot of American soldiers in Iraq. And yet this president thinks that this is the normal course of events, that he's doing us a service by taking America out of the world and focusing on rebuilding and changing American society here at home. That's a really big change. And it's something I think we're gonna talk about on the panel with Michael Ledeen and Lieutenant General Michael Flynn tomorrow. So I would encourage you all to come, with that, to, come to that. Now, I don't know if they're gonna discuss the choices that are in front of us with Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, but they aren't exceptionally good choices. Hillary Clinton is talked about as a defense hawk but, and I wish Ted Trimple was here to hear this, because I'm, sure I'm sure he'd have interesting things to say. But Hillary Clinton, think about her record on foreign policy, or at least her judgment on foreign policy. She misjudged Vladimir Putin. She misjudged the Arab Spring. She went into Libya, but didn't have a plan for what came after it. She was for the Iran deal. Yes, she was for an, uh, a stronger presence in Syria, but she didn't stand up for that principle and policy, and she didn't resign over it. China, she didn't speak up for human rights. When she came to China, uh, she, she talked about climate change. So you can't look at Hillary Clinton and say, in all, the, in all honesty, and say, this is a good choice for foreign policy because we've learned that her instincts are probably closer to Barack Obama's than they are to a conservative view of the world. And as for Donald Trump, and again, I wish someone else were here like Steve Moore, because I'm sure Steve would have a different view. Donald Trump does not seem to know very much about the world, and he certainly doesn't know very much about foreign policy. Trade is a separate issue, but I won't discuss it here. I don't want to take too much of your time, because I know that you have to go get ready for, for dinner with Carly. But Donald Trump's views are actually closer to Barack Obama's than, than not. He is very happy to see Vladimir Putin running Syria policy. He does not have a plan to push Iran to, to push Iran out of Iraq and to reduce its power. He has said very little about China except on trade. He said almost nothing about what his Asia strategy would be. So this is a challenge for us, but this is a tipping point, just like where we are on economic policy. We should have a debate and a discussion about what America's role in the world should be. And I don't believe that it's absolute retreat or absolute interventionism. I think there's something in between, uh, like the three bears, just right. There's something in between that's just right, uh, but we are not talking about this, we're not exploring it. And the problems that we're facing today are starting to come to America. They're coming to San Bernardino, they're coming to Orlando, they're coming to Boston. Who is the jihadi next door? I don't know, but there could be a jihadi next door to you. And stopping immigration will not stop that problem. The only way we're gonna stop that problem is to fight the ideas and to reassert American leadership in the world. And this is something that I, I hope is a debate that we can start at the Wall Street Journal, but importantly, it's a debate that you all have to have and to start thinking about and talking about with your policymakers, with your neighbors, with other voters, because I think it's very important. So I don't want to take too much of your time. Um, I understood that Tony Blankley used to, b used to wrap things up and then he had better uh, footwear than I do, so I'm going to get off stage. But uh, thank you all for staying. Thank you for bearing with me and listening to some of these remarks. I hope you'll tune in to Foreign Edition, and I look forward to tonight. It's going to be a great time with Carly. Thanks very much.